Hello, and uh, thank you for joining uh, Neurology Live, Peers and Perspectives presentation uh, entitled Management of Optic Neuritis. Uh, optic neuritis uh, is an inflammation of the optic nerve, uh, usually seen in patients with multiple sclerosis at some point in their disease. Uh, today, we're going to discuss management diagnosis, uh, and especially differential diagnosis now with this condition uh, and treatment. Uh, I am uh, Robert Surgott, uh, Chief of Neuro-Ophthalmology at Will's Eye Hospital, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm joined today by Dr. Rod Feruzen, uh, the Neuro-Ophthalmologist at Baylor College of Medicine, uh, Houston, Texas. So, uh, we're going to start with an overview of optic neuritis. What is it? It's pathophysiology, incidence, and prevalence. And what are the risk factors for this? And I'm going to ask Rod to uh, explain to us how he uh, teaches residents about this and how he talks to patients about optic neuritis. Sure. Hi, Bob. Thanks a lot. Um, for the introduction. And, uh, you know, generically, optic neuritis means inflammation of the optic nerve. And so that's the way I'll teach a patient or a resident about it. And historically, when we talk as ophthalmologists about optic neuritis, what we're usually referring to is that typical form that's associated, as you pointed out, with multiple sclerosis, a demyelinating condition. Now, there are other causes of optic nerve inflammation as well. So when we just say optic neuritis, we're not really specifying. Could it be from in some sort of infection? Could it be from other forms of sterile inflammation, which we'll, some of which we'll end up discussing? Uh, but that's what we mean when we talk about optic neuritis. So we all know that patients we see as neuro-ophthalmologists and most patients that are seen by neurologists uh, we're rarely the first physician they consult with. And after their uh, visit initially with either their primary care physician, an optometrist, a comprehensive general ophthalmologist, uh, before they get to us, they next stop at the internet. And uh, <clears throat> Rod, what are they likely to find uh, on the internet about optic neuritis if they uh, search for that? Yeah, the first thing they're going to see, they're going to get very concerned about multiple sclerosis by far and away. Um, and the, the, the key here is identifying that you, that you as the practitioner think this is optic nerve inflammation. That's the first key point. So when they come in, you have to identify those findings that are indicative of an optic neuropathy first, and then that you think this is optic nerve inflammation and not some sort of masquerade uh, such as ischemic optic neuropathy. So I want to uh, reinforce just what Rod said, which is he mentioned it's going to be in the optic nerve. That's why the patient can't see. And it's our job as neuro-ophthalmologists to make sure it's not a retinal issue that can mimic optic neuritis, uh, or it's not something else uh, as simple as they uh, uh, have extra astigmatism and need glasses as they get older. So uh, there's really a burden of proof here on us as neuro-ophthalmologists because, as Rod said, uh, the fear of multiple sclerosis is well-founded. Uh, when uh, Rod and I trained, uh, there was really little treatment for this disease, but now we have 20 medications for it. Uh, so it's really moved us into a new era, but still with some caution. Uh, depending on what study you look at, uh, anywhere between 50% and maybe 75% of patients will have optic neuritis as their first sign of relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis. Uh, as you know, uh, there's a form of multiple sclerosis called primary progressive disease, and optic neuritis is rare in that condition. Uh, we're not exactly sure uh, why that is. So, Rod, what about, say a patient comes in now, you localize it to the optic nerve, what are you going to do next? 
So once I've decided it's an optic neuropathy, again, the key is determining, I think, clinically, it looks like inflammation. So unless they're coming in already having tests such as an MRI and other evaluations, then I have to decide how do I establish it's an inflammatory optic neuropathy. And one of the key things from the history is noting that there's pain with eye movement, which is 90 plus percent of the time present in a typical patient with optic neuritis. And then I need to do the rest of the eye exam to look in the eye and see if there's involvement in the optic nerve, if there's swelling, if there's other evidence of inflammation in the eye, and then I'll make my decisions based on testing whether I think it's an inflammatory optic neuropathy or not. So if you're the first clinician to see this patient, say the patient saw their family doctor and you see them, are you going to always do an MRI? Uh, yes. And yep. that's going to be brain and orbits. Correct. So this is something that's changed. Uh, when MRI first came out, uh, uh, we didn't understand its power uh, for multiple sclerosis. Uh, but it made the invisible visible. Uh, we could then see uh, disease that patients didn't have symptoms for. And Rod very astutely mentioned he's going to do the orbital MRI, which is to look directly at the optic nerve for inflammation. That scan will also capture the optic chiasm because sometimes pituitary tumors or other tumors in that area can mimic optic neuritis. And he's doing the brain MRI to see if there are other lesions there that really look like uh, a multiple sclerosis, which then I think uh, has very strong implications for what we do next.